Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, an absolutely intriguing puzzle on the screen today. Uh, you'll notice there's a zero in it. We don't often get that as a given digit. Um, I will get to that in a minute. There's so much to talk about on the channel at the moment. So, the Kickstarter is available. That's the first link under the puzzle link on this description field. And uh, you can go there and make us make us make the book better by helping us reach our stretch goals i mean we will try and make the book very good anyway but if we keep getting people pledging then it will be even better and that's great um now domino sudoku has had an update so if you haven't refreshed that in whatever platform you've got then please do so now we also hear that the gas app is out on, well, it's now on all platforms. We it, we heard that uh, Steam had finally updated yesterday, but then we also heard, which we had not appreciated, that Google, the sort of Android thing, hadn't been working for everybody. And for some reason, it turned out they'd only phased a 20% rollout or something. I don't know why. Those, those tech companies sometimes be crazy. Um, but anyway, apparently it should be all good now. Do let us know in the comments or elsewhere if it's not um on patreon we've got the labors of hercules hunt this is a fantastic uh sudoku hunt and we strongly recommend it as does everybody who's written in with solutions or indeed just comments so far uh the puzzles are generally accepted to be a bit harder than last month's duality by skunk work so it's quite a tough challenge but very rewarding from what we understand well and from having solved it ourselves, we are aware that it is. It's very good. So do check that out. Um, Patreon, we're also going to be mentioning the solution to the Jovial and Shy competition soon, or rather the, the choice of the best, the best explanation. Um, what else have we got going on? I mean, loads. In fact, Simon might have done that already, in fact, in that case. Um, uh, there's Wordle in a minute. I was back to a one minute video for today, which is a relief, but who knows what tomorrow will bring. I haven't actually tried it yet, so we will see. Anyway, Dali wrote to us, and it's a debut for Dali, um, and said, I think you guys like math, so I do too. Um, well, I don't know if I like it. I don't mind it. That's normally the way, but maybe there's no distinction there. But anyway, Dali has created this puzzle called twice or half and the rules are these normal sudoku rules apply except that exactly one zero exists in the grid and is given replacing the same value in row column and box i think if there's exactly one zero in the grid it would have to wouldn't it I'm not a hundred percent sure about that but i think that rule didn't need to be stated. <laughs> I don't actually want to work that out for absolutely definite right now. I, I'm pretty sure that if you filled, yeah, if you filled the other 80 cells legitimately, surely you are only left with one cell that can be in the, in the last row, column and box that, that must represent the same digit. I, I think that must be right. Anyway, never mind. Dali has stated already that it replaces the same value in row, column and box. Digits along an arrow, there's only one arrow, sum to the number in the circle. A set of consecutive digits in any order appears on the purple line, that's the Renban rule, and there's only one Renban line, so that's a set of consecutive digits, not necessarily in order. There are eight special numbers. Each blue circle represents the last digit in an n-length number, red left to right, where n is the value in column one. For example, if row 2, column 1 was a 5, then there is a 5-digit number starting there and ending there. OK, I think we can understand that. There would be a 5-digit number in those cells. Now, what is special about the special numbers? Every special number is either twice the value of another special number or half the value of another special number. OK, so they're going to pair up in, um, in pairs as Noah no doubt said. Um, wow, okay. I'm, I'm looking at this grid and I'm going, how can this solve uniquely with just that rule? There really doesn't seem to be enough information. I'm told it does solve uniquely. So 
I'm going to give it a go, and we're going to we're going to see if we can get through this. I have a feeling this is going to be tough. Anyway, do try it yourself on the link under the video. Um, I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. I am feeling a bit puzzled about this. What on earth can you do? Zero is no use. I've got one other given digit. What on earth can we do? Can we think about the purple line? That could be one, two, three, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, hang on. Here's a thought. Oh, I'm very, I'm very slow today. Okay, but I've got something now. I'm going to put a nine there. I think this is right. Yes, these numbers, the the the, the special numbers, the special numbers have to have eight different lengths because these are going to be these are the indexes for how long the numbers are. And they're eight different numbers. So there are eight different lengths, and they pair up, as I said. And you might not initially know whether the one, whether there's a one-digit number that doubles into a two-digit number, and a three-digit number that doubles into a four, and so on and so on, and there's a nine-digit number left out, which is what I am going to be positing or whether there was some other odd number left out. Yeah, okay, sorry, I, I must try and explain what I'm thinking a little more articulately because it's not helping you if I just ramble away and only touch my ideas at a tangent. Okay, what I'm thinking is that given that the numbers are all different lengths, this is really vital. So the number that is double another number is a different length to it. So if you double a number beginning with four, you'll get a number with the same length, and the same goes for one, two, and three. So they aren't getting doubled. The numbers that are getting doubled are numbers that beginning with five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, they're all, yeah, they're all getting doubled to a number that begins with one. Okay, let me, let me just try and explain with an example. We could put 8 there if that was the one-digit number and 16 there if that was the two-digit number. And that would be fine. And that would use up the one and the two-digit number. And the two-digit number is always one digit longer than the one-digit number and that's always going to have to be a 1. And that is going to apply in all of the bigger numbers. They're all going to have to begin with a 1 now. Even though there are three rows in which you could theoretically put a nine at the start and have a nine-digit number, that nine-digit number would begin with nine. And that is too big a number. Nine would obviously have to be the bigger of two numbers. You could have an eight-digit number, double it to make a nine-digit number, but that nine-digit number would always begin with one. When I first put the nine in the corner, all I knew was it couldn't be a nine. I hadn't actually worked out then that it... It couldn't be a 9 because a 9 isn't a 1. It just seemed like 912 million was too much to double an 8-digit number, and that's right. So, I don't know if I've made this clear yet. I've gone off on another rambling tangent. Um, yes, what I'm seeing is that the 1... There will... We can't use a nine-digit number for the reason I explained, because it would begin with a nine and put it completely outside the range of doubling an eight-digit number. So the nine-digit number is in the row that doesn't have a special number. Sorry, the nine in column one is in the row that doesn't have a special number cell. So it's in this bottom row. So we get the nine there. Now, what we also know is that the one index, the one digit number, doubles to a two digit number. The three digit number doubles to a four digit number. The five digit number doubles to a six digit number. And the seven digit number doubles to an eight digit number. Now, I don't yet know anything about those, but maybe we can work something out. We also know that the even index numbers, the bigger numbers, the numbers that are doubles, not halves, are they begin with a 1 and they end with an even number because they're twice x. 
And those seem like little enough things, but I think they may be important. Right. We also know that the eight-digit number does not begin with an eight. There, it begins with a one. So it's got to be in one of these three rows because you're going to have an eight and then say it was this row, you're going to have an eight and then the eight-digit number beginning with a one and ending in the blue dot. So I'm going to pencil mark this across the column with an 8 in one of those cells and a 1 in one of those, because these are where the three dots are in the end column. Now, what happens with a 7? Does that mean that 7 has to be in one of these rows as well? Oh, no, it doesn't. I was thinking maybe I can't put 7 here, because I'm now not allowed to put a 1 there. But the seven-digit number doesn't begin with a one. It begins with a number that's bigger than four. Oh, rats. So all I know is that that row and that row can't be the seven. The seven could easily be in any of these other rows. That hasn't got me very far. The eight and the seven can still be on the line. I suppose this number, obviously, the yeah, I should have done this immediately. This is a pencil marking opportunity. The length of this number, um, well, it could be five. It's two. Th it begins with two, three, four, or five there, which doesn't limit this Renban line at all, unfortunately for me, where I am. Um, this number can't be the 8 or 7. I've kind of noted that. Can it be the 6? No. No, it can't be the 6. Oh, it could be the, the 1. This is 1, 2, 3 or 5. It can't be the 6 because the 6-digit number, being an even, being one of the higher numbers, ends in an even and has a 1 as its starting digit. So you couldn't fit a 6-digit number beginning with 1 in leading to that. Ah, where does the six-digit number go, and where does its one go? Yeah, these aren't the six-digit number, because the one would be in this column, and we've got that given one there already, and that's not the six-digit number for the same reason. So, the six-digit number is now in one of these three, and they all have a dot in the same column. I don't think that's a coincidence. And the one that starts the number is therefore in one of these three cells. Always in column three. And I'm, I'm pencil marking across boxes, which is dangerous in terms of how I interpret them. But, but it may be useful. Ah! Yeah, there's got there's always got to be a five on a five cell Renban like this in a straight line because whichever sequence of digits you use that are consecutive, they must involve a five. The lowest is one, two, three, four, five, the highest is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now on this line we also know there's not a nine. So actually we know that five and four must both be on this line. Again, the, the lowest sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The highest is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 4 and 5 are on the line and not in that cell. This is either a 1 cell number, a 2, or a 3. And this line is not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because of that. That cell would be broken. So there's also a 6 on the line. And the 6, therefore, cannot be here. And we know the 6 is now in one of these two. That's not where the 1 is. It's bringing a 1 with it to one of those cells. Oh, and these three are going to be the cells that don't get on the line. What does that mean for us? I'm starting to wonder. Oh, that's interesting. If this was an 8, if one of these was an 8, and they are two of the three possibilities for where 8 goes, 
then the 7 is going to have to be on the Renban line by virtue of the Renban rule. Because this, for this to be a sequence of consecutive digits, it's going to involve 7. And, oh, now I was going to say, once you've got the 8 in this box with the 1 there, it limits where 7 can be, but it doesn't, because the 7 number, the 7 digit number doesn't start with 1. Oh, fish hooks. Now, can these be 1, 2, and 3, which would be what they would have to be if we are going to put 8 on the line? This is interesting. It can't be a 2 down here because that number would begin with 0. It would be an outrageous bluff by Dali if there was a 1 in this cell. Why do I think that? Because... I'm convinced, well, my brain is convinced that the zero is in the grid because you just couldn't make this concept with the Sudoku digits only or, or Dali couldn't. And he's brilliantly come up with a set of numbers that can multiply up in this way, but the concession was that you needed a zero. However, if that was a one, this would be the one digit sum and you could have written whatever digit was meant to be here, here anyway. You wouldn't have needed to make it a zero. And that would be an outrageous double bluff. But logic doesn't preclude it, so I'm not going to rule a one out of this cell. Um, I just don't expect to see one in there at the end of the puzzle. Now, all of that said, I've learnt very little. I've learnt very little about this puzzle. And that there's some combo that I just haven't thought about enough. What is it? 8 is either in one of those cells. Yes, if 8 is in one of those cells, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are on the line. Ah, and this number... Oh, that's interesting. Right. This number, I was thinking, could begin with a 5 and be a 5-digit number. But if you multiply up a number beginning with a 5, you are going to get a sequence that either begins 1, 0 or 1, 1 as the double of that, the twice of that number. The Is there a noun for that? The double. The doubling of that number, let's say that. Um, and you can't begin a row in this column or a number in this in this puzzle with one zero or one one unless you were doing it down here and it would be a three digit number but that wouldn't be a five digit number being doubled so this is not a five five is unavailable there this is two three or four we've either got 12 14 16 or, yes if it's a four that's even so if that's a 2, this is 14, 16, or 18. If that's a 4, this is a 4-digit number. No, it can't be a 4 because it would have to begin with a 1. All of the even numbers, which are the doubles, have to begin with 1s. That is not a 4. This is 2 or 3. Now, I've got something. 2 or 3 is on the line, and that means 8 isn't. If you max the line out, given two or three there, it's three, four, five, six, seven. Eight is not on the line. I've got another digit in the grid. That's where the eight is, and the zero is in it. So we didn't get a one there, unsurprisingly. We get a one here to begin the eight-digit number, which I'm going to make purple. My plan is to match up uh, doubles and halves together if I ever get anywhere in this puzzle, which I am doubtful about, because I feel like I've made brilliant deductions already and I haven't got very far. It's it's intriguing. Oh, that's a two, three pair now. Okay, that's quite exciting uh, to me. No, it's great for the Renban as well. This one, why did I know that that was one, two or three? Because Four and five are on the line, and it's too short to the to the blue to the blue spot to be six or seven. Yes, so that is two or three. That is a two three pair. Which one is on the line? Well, it's not going to be two because then three wouldn't get on the line. So this one is the two. That is the three. Now I can pair those up 
Oh no, the two is double the one number. Sorry, I can't pair them together. Let's make that green. The three, that's a three digit number. We'll make it orange and it's doubled into a four digit number somewhere. Now, on the line, we have three, four, five, six, seven, and that is where one goes in the first column, and that pairs up with the green. Double that number is this number. We can put a one in at the start of a, a two, four, six, or eight digit number. Now, can we keep going, or are we kind of done? All of these spots are very late on in the rows now. Ah, but these ones are where six can be and that's doubling the five digit number Ooh, these can't be the five digit number because a one would start there ah that's a four seven pair now and one of them has a one in one of these cells yeah that makes sense and the other oh no why did I write a 1 there? Oh, for the 6-digit number. Yes, it's fine. 7, sorry, I've forgotten again. The 7-digit number doesn't have to begin with 1. So the 7-digit number begins in one of these two cells, but not with a 1. Indeed, with a high digit. Right. So these, which are not 4, 7, are a 5, 6 pair that pair up together and the 6... Digit number has a 1 in one of these cells, which is obviously not in this one because it's in a box which already has a 1. So the 1 goes there, 6 there, 5 there. Now I can colour in. 5 and 6 are a totally new colour. Let's make it yellow. So they pair up together. 3 pairs up with 4, which is either there or there. 7, which is either there or there, pairs up with the 8. Right, and this 8 has a 0 there. Now that definitely means that the 7 has a 5 in one of these cells, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I'm not an absolute arithmetic genius. And although I know that there are some essential relationships between numbers along these lengths. I'm not very good at working out what they are. I think anything like anything ending in 02, 04, 06, 08 is multiplying up 51, 52, 53 or 54. Yes. Well, okay, that's lovely. There has to be a 5 in one of those cells. And finally this arrow comes to play. This cannot be a 5 because you couldn't make five from three Sudoku digits. So the five is there. That is the number that is doubling to make this. So that is the seven digit purple number. We've got the whole of the first column of indexes done. We get a one there, not a one there. Um, it could be a one in the end column here, so I don't know about that. Then we've got a one in one of those. Now, let's remember what I was trying to remember earlier about the even numbers over here. They always begin with a 1. And, oh, of the 4, sorry, I haven't coloured that. They always begin with a 1 and they always end in even. So, this one is 2, 4, or 6. This one is 2 or 6. I'm not going to put 8 in because of the arrow. And I'll look at that again in a moment. This is also 2 or 4. And this can't be a 6 now, of course. It couldn't be a 6 before, but you can't put 2 and 1 there. So I think this has to be a 2. Is that right? Feels right. And that is multiplying up this number, which must be... Can't be a 1, so that must be a 6 now. Oh, no. Yes, 16 multiplied together gives 32. That works. Oh, that does not work. That doesn't work because this arrow doesn't work. Oh, bother. Right, I'm going to go back to where I was thinking about... 
I feel that I'm okay up to here. Then I decided that this zero meant you couldn't have a five here, so this couldn't be the seven digit number. Was that not right? How could you have a seven digit number here, multiplying up to that without getting a five there? Have I made a mistake before this? Okay, let's go back a bit. Oh my goodness, what have I done wrong here? Right, I decided that this was the four and seven pair because, ah, uh, because a five digit number couldn't start there with a one. Five digit number doesn't have to start with a one. Why do I keep forgetting this? Right, I'm sorry guys, I have to go back to this point. I thought I was making great progress, I unequivocally wasn't. I think I'm all right up to this point because I don't think I've presumed any other ones. Still, the six number must begin with a one in one of those cells. That's true. The seven number doesn't have to begin with a one, but it will begin, well, in one of these, those three cells now. Ah, oh, what a mess. Okay, come on, think it through again then. Right, that three-digit number does not multiply up to a four-digit number here because you'd only get a little two or a three in the circle. That doesn't work. So that's not a four. Now, if that was a seven, yeah, this is the problem. If that was a seven, it multiplies up to this eight-digit number and you need a five there and that's still not enough. So this, this is a five why have I determined it's not a six? Because that would start with the one there. Yeah, that's okay. This is a five. There we go. Right. Well, I can't remember what colours I was using at all. I'm going... <laughs> doesn't really matter. I'm going yellow now for the five. Um, that's the five. It's going to multiply up to the six, which is either here or here. Now, is there a problem with multiplying that up to here? And the problem I'm envisaging is that this number is 6, 7, 8 or 9 in the circle. Now that will multiply up to give... Wow, well, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9 here. Hmm... Ah, no, it depends what it is, doesn't it? If it's a 9, it would multiply up to give 8 or 9. That's impossible on the arrow, so forget that. If it was an 8, it would multiply up to give 6 or 7 on the arrow. And that's impossible still with an 8 there. So we can forget that. So it could be a 7 multiplying up to give a 4 specifically, not a 5 on the arrow. And if it was a 6 it would multiply up to give a 2 or a 3 on the arrow. Oh, but that's all assuming this is the 6-digit arrow. OK, what I was actually hoping to do was eliminate that possibility, and I can't do that. If it is the 6-digit arrow here, that is a 6 or a 7. That much I'll say. Um, oh, gosh, I'm really struggling now. Now, there is a 1 in one of these three cells. Oh, that's not a one. Oh, that's how we know where the six goes. Yes, that's still a genuine deduction. Ugh. This puzzle's doing my head in. Doing my head in. Right, those two are the four seven pair that are left at the end. That's really weird. That's not where I thought they were at all. This can't be the four because it can't begin with a one there. So we're done in the first column again. Let's hope I'm right this time. We get a one there. That goes with the 3, so that's orange. The 7 goes with the 8, so it sits there, I reckon. The 6 is double the 5, and it is down here now. So we can go back to that theory. 6 or 7 there, 2, 3 or 4 here. This 0 is double 50-something at the end of that. So we'll put a 5 in there. Ah, this also must be low, so that doesn't go, so that that doesn't have to become a carried one. So this is one, two, three, or four, and this is 
no, we can do this even stuff again that I'd forgotten. This is even. Two or four. Can't be six because of the arrow. This is not even this time. Fair enough. Doesn't have to be a one. There's a one in one of those two cells. Yes, it does have to be a one because we ruled out nine from here. And we need a one on the arrow. There it is. Doesn't quite... Ah, if that's a seven, this multiplies up to... be. If that's a six, does 61 multiply up to give 3, 2 here? Yes, it does. So that's quite likely. If that's a 7, 71 multiplies up to give 4, 2 here. Oh, that's always a 2 because it's double 1. That's simple enough. But actually, those are unresolved, which is utterly peculiar, but correct, I think. Now, we've got 2, 4 or 6 there. I couldn't have 8 because it's over here, so we can't have 4 there. This also now can't be 2, because we just placed a 2, so that can't be 4. This number is going to be doubled to hit, in fact, a 1 there, and this now can't be a 2. Ah, that's a 3, that's a 4, that's a 7. Oh, yes. This is a, an even number, 6 or 8. Now, this is where I have to be careful. That doesn't just give 3 and 4 as possibilities here, it also gives... 8 and 9. Um, 4, 5, in fact, in the box, though, has to be here. These are from 6, 8 and 9. Now, OK, we can maybe double those up. 6, 71 doubled gives 1, 4, 2. So we're carrying 1 here. 6 doubled will end in, therefore, 3. 8 would end in 7. Uh, 9 would end in 9. I find this very exciting. I mean, that's probably quite a sad admission, but it's absolutely true. Right, 16, 18 or 19 is the doubling of an 8 or a 9 here. Um, this is double that. And this is 4, 6 or 8. So that is 7, 8 or 9. It can't be 7, so we can remove... Th Oops, we can remove 4 as a possibility there. The green's going to be the only sum I can fully do in my head at the end of this. Um, the only multiplication, the only product, I should say, to be precise. Ugh, I'm very scared of the whole purple thing. There's a lot of digits to fill in in there in that multiplication. Oh, look, three is looking at that cell. That's a one. This is a two. That gets me two of the digits in purple. Um, 51, I mean, I don't know how to go about this next one. I don't want to try. 1372, oh, and 0 is, of course, completely bogus. <laughs> Represents some other digit in the Sudoku sense. Mm, that's so strange. Um, oh, this can't be a 4 because that would be 28 at the end of this. Okay, so that's... Oh, so it's an 8-9 pair. So this is either 8-1-9 or 9-1-8. And 8-1-9 multiplies up to 6-3-8. 9-1-8 multipl... Sorry, that's nonsense. 8-1-9 multiplies up to 1-6-3-8. And 9-1-8 multiplies up to 1-8... Three, six. So this is a 6-8 pair as well. How bizarre. So that's a 9. Ooh, and I can use that in the yellow calculation. That's a 9 as well. And we're carrying 1 again. Now, OK. 5, 9, 6, 1, 9, 4, 2, 5. These digits are from 3, 7 and 8. Oh, there's an 8, 6, 8, 3, 1, 4. 5 is in one of those two. 9's in one of those two. A bit of Sudoku might help us a little here. Right, let's use the fact that that is 3, 7 or 8 to determine what this is. This is either a 6 followed by a high number or an 8. Oh, it, yes, it can't be 9, so that can't be an 8 anymore. So it's either a 6 or an 8, but this can't be low, because it has to 
carry one to get the three or the seven there in the calculation below. So that's a six eight pair. Now this either begins six eight, in which case this begins one three seven, or it begins eight six, in which case this begins one seven three. Oh. I suppose I could have done that by Sudoku with a 6-8 pair there, I can eliminate 8 here. But the, the maths works for both, which is good, because I wouldn't have known that that was commutative, effectively. Um, right, I can put a 4 here by Sudoku. This is now a 2-5 pair. I'm, I'm getting more excited by this puzzle as we go along, not less. 2 and 3 there. Oh, look, there's a 6-8 pair now in this column. I'm sure that doesn't help at the moment. I'm really going to have to start attempting the purple calculation. OK, let's just have a look at this. This cell can be 2, 4, 3, 6 or 8. I don't think I can do any more with, with yellow or with my orange pairs because they seem to give these alternatives. There might be something, you know, because there's an 8 either there or there. I can't put an 8 there, but maybe that's for later. Anyway, this is 2, 3, 4, 6 or 8, doubling up, plus 1. So this is odd down here because, because of 51, we're carrying a 1. So this has to be odd, and it's not 5, 9, 4, 2, 1 or 8. It is therefore th 3 or 7. And that means that this can't be 2. It could be 351 to give 702. Oh, and it would have to be 151 to give 302? No, this could be 651 to give 1302, okay? Or, or 851. This just can't be a 4 now. Oh, bother. 3 or 7 there. I don't know. How am I meant to crack on through this? It's not deep maths, is it? I don't want to do that. Let's just do Sudoku. Let's put a 1 there, the last one in the grid. Why not? Let's put a 9 in one of those two cells. Um, oh, come on. There must be some, some, some Sudoku I can do rather than having to do the calculation. I'm so scared of it. The trouble is, now I don't know whether this is big or little. It widens the possibilities here, doesn't it? Okay, this one is... Ah, this has to be bigger because it's multiplying up to give an eight-digit number. So that is six or nine. That is going to... It's not nine. Ah, oh, because that would put eight or nine here. So it's six or seven here and definitely six here. That rules out six from here. So this is either 351 giving 702 or... 851 giving 702 again. Wow, I'm so bad at this maths. It just doesn't come naturally. That 7 fixes that to be a 6. I wish I knew what 0 was now, but I don't. So I don't know what these three digits are. Oh look, 6, 8 pair though, looking up at that cell. That's a 3. Right, 351 multiplies up to give 702. So now it those four digits multiply up to give those five. This is two, four, eight, or nine, I reckon. This is even because it has to be, because we're multiplying that four digit number into that. And this can only be a four. So that can only be a two. And two, three, five, one multiplies to give four, seven, oh, two. So we're doing this six. Oh, hang on. Why have I written a 6 there? No, why have I written a 6 there? That's the nonsense. Ah, OK, I'm just going back to that. So bad at maths. What did we have here? I figured that this was 2, 4, 6, 8 or 9. Multiply, but it had to be large. Oh, and it can't be 8. So that is 6 or 9. That gives, and I think I wrote the wrong things down, 
That makes this a 3, doesn't it? 6 would multiply out to give 12 or 13 here. 9 would multiply out to give 18 or 19. So that's a 3. That's a 6. Why did I write 6 there? I don't know. Maybe it was a misprint. 7 there. And what this then... Oh, this then is giving 702. I'm so bad at this. This is either a 3 or an 8 to do that. And it's not an 8 because we've got this 6-8 pair. Okay, so I think I'm recapitulating some of the logic here. Maybe I just had a mistype. I don't know. Anyway, this digit... Oh, I've just seen that 3 sorts out 2 there. This digit is 2, 4, 8, or 9. Multiplying up to give double that, an even digit, which is... Well, I was going to say 4 or 6, but there's that 6 pair. So that is 4, and that is 2, because it can't be 7. Now these 3 multiply up to give that total, and it looks right this time. This is 4, 8, or 9, doubling to give an even digit, which now has to be 6, and that means that's an 8. Yes, and that 6 sorts out 8, 6 there, which puts 8 there. Now I can finish the green and yellow sums. Hopefully not making any more mistakes as we trog on. That also does this by Sudoku, and that does this by Maths. And now I have either a 4 or a... No, by Sudoku I have a 9 to put here. And by Sudoku that's going to give me... No, by Maths that's going to give me a 9 here. And that's all of the multiplications done. Let me just check that 698 is 2 short of 700, which multiplies to give 4 short of 1400. Yes. Oh, we breathe a sigh of relief and excitement. I think I'm going to be able to finish this now, because unless, unless Dali has baked something into the end of the puzzle, we are literally going to be there now. Um, of course, we've still got this zero to deal with, but hopefully it's not going to be a big problem. 2, 3, and 8. That is a naked 2. That's a 3, and that's an 8. So we finish that column. This is a 4 to finish the row. That's a naked 6. We can finish off 7 and 3. This is a 6. These digits are... Oh, of course, the 0 represents a 5, we now know, from the row. So we've got 4 and 8 to fill in in the box. We can do 7, 6, 5 there. 2, 3, 7 here. Yes, that'll go. 3, 7, 2, 5, 4 here. Can't do that. Could probably get this cell by uniqueness, but I'm not going to do it that way. 5 and 7. Uh, the 5 makes this a 4. 5, 4, 5, 2. 6 and a 4 to go. And there we go. That is... Oh, it says the solution is correct. The solution is input in this one. There we go. Now, I am tempted to just do the maths again. I mean, I suppose I've been told the solution is correct, so I don't have to. 9 doubled is 18. 8, 1, 9 doubled is 1, 6, 3, 8. That's fine. Now, it gets harder here. 8, 6, 9, 7, 1. You're carrying every time. You get a 2, 4, 9... I remember once at school, one of the maths geniuses, and I was doing a multiplication and carrying digits, and I said, how do you do it so fast? He goes, oh, I look from the front, just do it that way. I didn't really understand, to be honest, I'm not that good. Um, 971, yes, 1942, 86, yeah, that's right. And then, and again, a number with huge starting digits. The 2351 clearly gives 4702. 698, yes, I worked that out. 2 short of 700 multiplies up to 4 short. That Renban is correct. This arrow is correct. And that is the solution. What a brilliant puzzle. That is, oh well, it's by Dali. It is almost surreal in its brilliance. I don't know whether that counts as a, a grid that has been found or computer created, but it's a lovely idea. And it's so well implemented. That starting grid with with the almost nothing in it, and indeed one literal nothing in it. Um, it's just genius. Lovely stuff.
Thank you, as always, for watching us on the channel. Um, I don't know why you do it, but I'm glad you're with us. And uh, we'd love to see you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.